chicken marsala is definitely one of those classic dishes that you almost always see at those old school Italian restaurants. You know, the ones with the vines going on and they got pictures of bottles of wine. Maybe the Corleone family hung out there at one point, but dang it, is it always so good. Before you ask, yep, back with the hat today. I need a haircut, didn't have time to throw it together, so that's how we're gonna do it. Chicken marsala is actually one of the first dishes I ever learned how to make, except we used veal. Very thinly sliced scallopini, floured up, cooked, that marsala mushroom sauce, so good. We're gonna do the same thing with chicken, well, because it's way easier to find. We do need to knock out a little bit of prep, and it all starts with those mushrooms. Sound good? Let's cook. We are going to be using some cremini mushrooms, which are essentially actually baby bella mushrooms. They're just a little bit darker. Sure, you could use domestic mushrooms if that's all you have. Now to get rid of any excess dirt or sticks or anything, just use a damp paper towel and wipe off as much of that as possible. For slicing, what I like to do is slice off the end and then roll it over. See how it stays nice and flat? This way it's not rocking back and forth. It kind of protects your fingers and makes it way easier to slice. Definitely practice doing this. Once they are all sliced up, we are just putting them to the side right in a bowl. Go back to the cutting board. I've got a shallot. What we want to do is small dice these. We prep this in the exact same way we would any onion, slicing ends off, slicing in half, ripping off that outside hard shell, and then small dicing away. Here's a video if you need help on how to do this more precisely. And next to add even more flavor, we are going to finally mince up some fresh garlic. If you want, you can absolutely run it through a garlic press like I like to do these days. And now, of course, for the chicken breast, I've got four seven to nine ounce chicken breasts. This is perfect size. No need to go any further than that. But what we want to do is slice these in half widthwise. We want to extend the chicken, but also we do not want this to be super thick. That's definitely not classic. Remember, think scallopini. So put your hand over the top and then gently slice through in half until it is perfectly sliced. Set it to the side. Now using some plastic wrap or even a plastic bag, of course also make sure your cutting board is nice and clean because you just prepped up raw chicken. What we want to do is place the plastic wrap on top, put one sliced chicken breast in, and then fold the plastic wrap over. I usually double it up. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because I'm pounding it a little bit with the mallet and I don't want to rip the plastic and I feel like that double protection layer actually helps. But very gently pound it. We're not trying to get it super thin at all. We just want to tenderize it. Maybe 20 to 25 little gentle pounds. Set it to the side on a sheet tray line with parchment paper. One more thing to prep up. We need to make a little bit of a breading flour. So using all-purpose flour, like I always say, I like to put them in little pie tins. It's just easy to do. Season it up with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Using a fork or whisk, mix all those things until they are completely combined. Now head back over to the chicken. We also want to season this well with salt and pepper. Remember, be about a foot away from what you're seasoning so you can cover every little square centimeter so that it tastes delicious. Now move it over a little bit on the cutting board. Now it's time to dredge the chicken breast very lightly in the seasoned flour on both sides. But you want to make sure it's light, okay? We do not want a thick coating. This is not fried chicken. Dust off as much as possible and then simply set it to the side. Prep is definitely not that bad with this recipe, and from now on, it's going to move super quick, so pay very close attention. I'm heading over to a very large frying pan. I'm going to add in some olive oil. I know this seems like a lot, but I promise you it's going to absorb in the chicken and for sure the mushrooms. We're going to crank the heat only to medium. It's going to take about three or four minutes to heat up. The old Italian way to know it's hot, throw a little flour in there. If it starts to turn light brown, we're good. Now we have to do this in batches because, well, I've got a lot of chicken breasts. So add three to four at a time in there. Do not overcrowd the pan. We are going to cook it for about four to five minutes on one side until it gets golden brown. After that time, give it a flip. We're only going to cook it for maybe one to two minutes more. It's okay if it's not completely cooked through because we're going to warm it up at the end. 
in the gravy, but make sure it is brown just like this. Then set it to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Back over to that pan, grab those cremini mushrooms, pour them in there, spread them out a little bit in the pan with your hand. Crank the heat back onto high because we are going to take the time to caramelize these. Let them cook. Okay, so after a few minutes, come in, shake it up a little bit, but absolutely brown these very, very well. Take the time, maybe 10 to 12 minutes on that high heat. Move some things around. Delicious. Now to add in shallots and garlic. Push the mushrooms to the other side of the pan. You've seen me do this in other videos. Now in the bottom side of the pan that has nothing in it, we're going to add in our small diced shallot, followed up with some of the finely minced garlic cloves. And then grab a few pads of unsalted butter, add it in there. This is only going to take about 30 to 45 seconds to cook. It's going to brown up. Of course, once you smell the garlic, it's done cooking. And then at that point, mix all of this goodness together in with the sauteed mushrooms. Now remove the pan from the heat completely because what we want to do is add in that Marsala wine. We don't want it to catch fire while it's on the cooktop. I've seen crazy things happen in the restaurant industry. Pour it in there and then gently place it back on the stove. Now you do not have to flambe it. That means put the fire on there, cook off the alcohol, it will cook off itself. But if you want to, tilt the pan a little bit and a little flame will shoot up. Do not stress out. It's not going to be any higher than this. And it will probably take about 30 to 45 seconds for it to completely cook off. All right, we're rounding third base here. Add in some very good chicken stock. I've got a great recipe for it. We're going to keep that heat on high. We're going to cook it until it's reduced by one half. So we're going from two cups down to one cup of liquid. It should get nice and thick. If you want it thicker, you can add in a little bit of roux, which is equal parts weight, melted butter, and flour. Season the sauce very well with salt and pepper. Super, super important here. It should not be bland at all. Now to reheat up, add the chicken in as much as you can at a time. Remember, it's been sitting out for a little bit. Flip it over. Let it heat up for about 45 seconds. That's all it's going to take to finish cooking it and to make sure it's super hot before serving it. Go ahead and try to tell me fundamental techniques aren't important after you just watch this. Now, there are two different ways to plate this up, so don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you really quick. Here we go. To serve this up one way, leave it in the pan. Keep the mushrooms on top of all that chicken breast, and it's very classic to garnish it with fresh chopped parsley. Now, if you want to take this to another level, still very simple. I've got some homemade fettuccine noodles tossed in a little bit of butter, Parmesan cheese, salt, and pepper. Of course, these noodles are fresh. Got a killer recipe for that. Then add the chicken breast right to the side. Top off with all sorts of good, delicious mushrooms and sauce that we made. And then again, garnish it with a little bit more parsley. Boom, delicious chicken marsala. If you love this recipe, which I know you do, better like and share it. Definitely subscribe to my channel. Check out this video right here. I made it for you. We will see you on there. Let's get in this.